The follow-up section is dedicated to describing the impact, dissemination and evaluation. In this section, you should list the expected outcomes for participants, resulting from their planned learning and active involvement and participation in the project. This may include knowledge, skills, changes in attitude or behavior, impact on the employment status, ability to access further education, well-being or lifestyle. Consider the most relevant and realistic outcomes. For participating organizations, you must detail how the activity may generate organizational learning or specific skills for staff. Describe the influence the project may have on future work. You should also consider if this project will develop the participating organizations or participants' understanding of a certain issue in youth work or train them in any new methodology that can be implemented in their local community. Highlight any activities you plan to involve the wider community in and the benefits to them. Given that dissemination should be considered throughout the project, you should ensure that dissemination activities are focused, relevant, well described and with clearly identified target audiences. Dissemination activities may be in the form of local meetings, workshops or discussions and you may use handouts, reports and media products. You may also plan to get press coverage or invite local councillors or decision makers to dissemination events. The Erasmus Plus marketing team is always keen to hear about interesting case studies and there is an Erasmus Plus dissemination platform which can be used. It is called the Erasmus Plus Project Results Platform and we encourage using it for sharing project outcomes. For youth worker mobility projects, each individual that participates in the project is expected to cascade information across the formal and informal network upon their return. Dissemination should take place across all partner organizations. You are also expected to include a final evaluation of the project in which you assess whether or to what extent the project has been a success. This evaluation should highlight the learning outcomes of all involved. This section should detail how activities will be monitored and what methods will be used for evaluation. In addition to the final evaluation, we also encourage making evaluation before and during the activity. This helps with establishing baselines and identifying any implementation improvements. Consider involving partners, placement providers and participants in the evaluation stages. Identify how you will evaluate activities during the project and the participant satisfaction with the mobility overall. Think about how you will evaluate the management process, make a longer term evaluation of the project and use the findings. Budget Summary This page provides an overview based on the activities entered earlier and allows you to add any additional comments. Each section is displayed on the budget page. It is important to be aware that if the project is approved, the application organization will receive the grant and will be responsible for distributing it amongst the partners to ensure effective delivery of the project. Here, you see a breakdown of your budget and any comments should appear over here. Remember, the Erasmus Plus grant is regarded as a contribution to your project costs and may not cover the total costs of your project. The national agency cannot award any funding over the amount requested, so please ensure that you check your budget thoroughly before you submit your application. When it comes to the budget, there are two types of budget headings and they're based either on unit costs or the actual costs. So you have the following budget headings. 1. Travel, which is a contribution towards the cost of each participant's return journey from the place of origin to the location of the mobility activity. Travel is calculated on a unit cost basis and is based on the travel distance calculated by the distance calculator. 2. Organizational support is also calculated on a unit cost basis and is a contribution towards costs directly linked to the implementation of mobility activities. It excludes subsistence for participants and the funds are expected to include preparation, monitoring and support and validation of learning outcomes. 3. Special needs support is only applicable if you plan to involve participants with special needs or disabilities which will result in additional costs. This component is based on an estimate of the likely actual costs relating specifically to the needs of participants with disabilities. Ensure you provide a clear and detailed justification for the amount requested. 
it will be assessed as part of the overall assessment of the application. And if the request is not reasonable, it may be reduced or removed. Whilst there is no limit to the amount you can request, the balance will be payable on the actual costs evidenced at the final report stage. Exceptional costs are calculated on an actual cost basis, and applicants must detail how many participants the funds are requested for and provide a breakdown of the costs in the narrative. Specifically, exceptional costs can support the following. Visa and visa-related costs, costs for providing a financial guarantee, expensive travel costs and travel for participants from outermost regions and overseas countries and territories. Please note that in the budget comments you must demonstrate that the standard unit cost for travel will not cover at least 70% of the cost of the journey and that you can only claim 80% of the total cost. Further down, exceptional costs can also support participation of young people with fewer opportunities, costs in support of reinforced mentorship which, as I mentioned before, is just for volunteering projects for young people with fewer opportunities, and lastly, accommodation and board costs for advanced planning visit, which includes a maximum of two-day activities and three-night accommodation. Project Summary Section Ensure you provide a well-written, comprehensive summary of your project. It must be written in plain and clear language, free of any jargon. It is important to be concise and clear. Mention at least the following elements. Context or background of your project. Objectives of the project. Number and profile of participants. Description of activities. Methodology to be used in carrying out the project. Short description of the results. And impact envisaged and potential longer term benefits. The summary may be used by the European Commission or the national agency in their publications and it will be published on the Erasmus Plus dissemination platform. The subsections that you have are Summary of Participating Organizations and Summary of Activities and Participants. Both of them are pre-populated tables based on the information from earlier sections of the application. Once again, you have a chance to check if everything is correct, if all of the organizations have been included, if the number of participants in your activities is correct, and if you have all of the activities included. Again, if you need to change anything, you must go back to the activity section and change it flow by flow.